The death toll is rising in San Antonio, Texas, where bodies of migrants were found inside an abandoned tractor trailer. Correspondent Tony Waterman is live for us in San Antonio with the very latest. Tony? Yeah, actually, we're actually seeing some vehicles come in right now. A canine unit just came uh, past the scene right here. Uh, the authorities on the ground, not 100 percent sure that all of the individuals who are inside of this tractor trailer have been accounted for. So they're bringing in additional search crews uh, to take a look around to make sure that everyone is accounted for. But as you said, Mexican officials now saying that the death toll has risen to 50. That includes, according to Mexican officials, 22 uh, Mexicans seven um, Guatemalans or Hondurans rather um, and two uh, Hondurans so seven Guatemalans two Hondurans apologies uh, on that and what we're also know is that uh, officials received a phone call just before 6 p.m. on Monday evening there was a local worker in the area who said that he had heard a call for help when they arrived on the scene they found this tractor trailer there were a lot of individuals who were inside but there were also people who had died outside of the truck they believe that those people were trying to escape what was likely quite sweltering conditions inside. Officials say that there was a refrigeration system in the truck, but it did not appear to be working. They did not find any water. So a lot of the survivors had been suffering from heat stroke, from heat exhaustion. 16 individuals, including four children, taken to the hospital uh, for treatment. The governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, has placed the blame for this tragedy on Joe Biden's doorstep, saying it's because of his immigration policies uh, that this type of tragedy was allowed to unfold, that he wasn't being strong enough on immigration. Of course, uh, other people would disagree, saying that this is about poverty, this is about desperation. That's what the Mexican president has said, and also that there is not enough control at the border right now. So uh, this investigation has now been turned over to Homeland Security. It's unfolding. Three individuals in custody, not clear at this point their exact connection uh, to this tragedy. And Tony, as you pointed out, thankfully, someone had heard the cries coming out from this abandoned vehicle. Do we know additional details as, as to why these individuals were unable to leave? Was it locked? Could you not exit? Well, we don't know the exact details of that, but if people were found outside of the tractor trailer, it would indicate that perhaps it wasn't locked, that people were able to escape, but many of them just too weak at that point to physically remove themselves uh, from the situation. Of course, a lot of these people are coming uh, to the United States. We have seen a record number, at least in the last couple of decades, a record number of attempted border crossings, 1.7 million in the fiscal year of 2021. We are on track now to see that number uh, in Increase. Certainly when President Biden went into the White House, he came in with a friendlier approach to immigration than the former president. Uh, and also some people saying that Title 42, that pandemic era policy of turning away migrants at the border, including asylum seekers, may have played a role here. Because when those individuals are turned back, there are, uh, are no criminal penalties, there's no detention. So they oftentimes will return and try to get in again. In fact, officials saying 30 percent of people that are attempting to Across the border right now have tried previously uh, to do that. So, uh, of course, migrant smuggling is nothing new. We have seen these horrific tragedies before. In 2017, 10 individuals found dead in a truck. Also here in San Antonio in 2003, 19 individuals found inside a truck in Victoria, Texas. So this is an issue that the Biden administration is vowing to try to fix, but of course, an ongoing problem. And when you have a 1,250 mile long border between Texas and Mexico, you do have a lot of people attempting to cross in. Yeah. A number of folks were also taken to nearby hospitals as well to seek treatment. Uh, we'll try to get an update on their status. Correspondent Tony Waterman with the very latest. Tony, thank you. All right, for more, we'll welcome in Newsweek opinion editor and the host of the Josh Hammer Show, Josh Hammer, and Democratic strategist Bree Maxwell. Thank you both for coming on here. Uh, just a, a tragic story here that we're learning uh, as more is discovered as the hours go by here. Um, I wanted to jump into the governor's response already in Texas here. A Republican governor from Texas saying, Greg Abbott saying this, quote, these deaths are on Biden. They are a result of his deadly open border policies. They show the deadly consequences of his refusal to enforce law, end quote. And then the White House press secretary had this to say. Uh, but the fact of the matter is the border is closed, uh, which is in part why you see people trying uh, to make this dangerous journey using smuggling networks. 
And I'll go to Josh Hammer on this, and, and again, separating the tragedy that you see there to a broader scope of what's happening. This is not the first death or deaths that, that we've reported on, as many are trying to come across the border in record numbers. So first of all, this is an unspeakable human tragedy, obviously, and my heart goes out to the families of the victims. This is a this is an astonishingly high death toll for a single incident, on, but unfortunately, this is not necessarily an outlier as far as deaths are concerned in, in making that very perilous trip from Central America and that Northern Triangle region in, in, in Honduras and Guatemala in particular, going all the way up to the United States-Mexico border. The problem is, the problem with the open borders pro-amnesty immigration crowd is that human beings respond to incentives. Human beings are inherently rational creatures. They literally did interviews on the border last fall, down when there was that mini crisis in Del Rio, Texas. We all saw the images down there. They literally interviewed at what at the, what at the time were Haitian migrants who were trying to come across the border. They went up with a microphone they said so why are you coming and they literally said straight to the camera they said because the, the the administration's policies are trying to welcome us there when you telegraph a message that your border is open what you do is you disproportionately and perversely incentivize the world's most gruesome transnational criminal cartels these cartels that control large swaths of the u.s mexico border and mexico and that part of the country is a failed narco state they and the way that they treat these migrants is horrific so a lot of this is on the administration i think governor abbott is exactly correct he's incentivized the worst worst actors in this hemisphere we were showing just the numbers and control room. We can bring those back again. You're setting records when it comes to the number of encounters along the southern border here. Uh, if you just take a look at the most recent one for the month of May, 239,000 who had been apprehended and encountered along the southern border here. Uh, Bree Maxwell, yet we heard from the, the press secretary that the border is closed. Why the disconnect to the data that we're seeing? So I agree with what Josh is saying. However, these are 50 families who have been trying to do what they can do to or putting their lives at risk to make sure that they are doing what they need to do to make sure they can take care of their families. And America being the country that it is shows a lot of promise and a lot of hope for a lot of people trying to cross the border. And as the press secretary said, the border is closed right now. This was a rule that President Trump initiated when he was president. The border is closed. We have to figure out a way to make sure the pathway for people to enter America is a little bit easier. Do we need to vet these people a little bit better so that we can make sure that cartels are not able to enter this country? I absolutely agree. But we also need to make sure we're trying to figure out ways to make sure that people who are just trying to find out how to take care of their families in a better way have an easier and better access to this country. All right, out of time. Josh Hammer, Bree Maxwell, thank you so much.